Namaskar. A warm welcome to World News and Indian Perspective on All India Radio. This is Gaurav Sharma and with me is VC Pramod bringing glimpses of the major developments of the day from across the globe. Over the next half an hour we shall bring you the latest from the world of politics, economy, sports, entertainment and more. Let's take a quick look at the headlines first. India welcomes Egypt as the fourth member of the BRICS new development bank. The United States reports record COVID-19 infections as Europe's Omicron cases also rise. India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi to inaugurate and lay the foundation stone of 23 development projects in Uttarakhand tomorrow. In cricket, India set a victory target of 305 runs for South Africa in the Centurion Test. And world number one tennis player Novak Djokovic pulls out of the ATP Cup in Sydney. As India marches towards administering 150 crore vaccine doses against COVID-19, news about the new corona variant is a cause of concern. In this situation, we appeal to our listeners to get fully vaccinated at the earliest and help others get vaccinated. Please continue to follow these three simple steps to stay safe. Wear a face mask, maintain 2 gaz ki doori for social distancing and focus on hand and face hygiene. For any covid related information and guidance, contact the national helpline numbers 01123978050. And one zero seven five. And now the news in detail. India has welcomed Egypt as the fourth new member of the BRICS New Development Bank. The External Affairs Ministry spokesman Orindam Bakshi said, Bangladesh, UAE, and Uruguay joined in September this year. Mr. Bakshi said the membership expansion enables the New Development Bank into positioning itself as a premier development institution for emerging economies. The New Development Bank aims to mobilize resources for the development projects in BRICS, the emerging economies, and the developing countries. The United States and several European countries have reported their highest daily rise in COVID cases since the pandemic began as the Omicron variant spreads. More than 440,000 new cases were recorded in the US on Monday, the health officials said. France, Italy, Greece, Portugal and England have also reported a record number of daily infections. The officials said the high figures could be due in part to reporting delays over the Christmas period. Here's a desk report. Studies suggest that Omicron is milder than the previously dominant Delta variant, but fears remain that the sheer number of cases stemming from the highly infectious Omicron could overwhelm hospitals. The WHO, that is the World Health Organization, has warned that the risk posed by Omicron remains very high. On Wednesday, Poland recorded 794 COVID-related deaths, the highest number in its fourth wave of the pandemic, with more than three quarters of victims unvaccinated. In the US, cases recorded by the US Center for Disease Control and Prevention CDC rose by 441,278 on 27th of December by far the highest number of daily cases ever reported to the agency the health agency has also expanded its travel warnings for parts of Europe adding Malta Moldova and Sweden to the list of countries where travel poses a very high risk of infection according to a report published by the WHO yesterday the The number of new covid infections of all variants grew by 57% in Europe in the week before 26th of December and by 30% in America. On Tuesday France reported 1,79,807 new infections, Europe's highest ever number of daily cases. French health minister Olivier Véran warned that everything suggests France could see as many as 2,50,000 daily cases by the start of January. Prime Minister Jean Castex announced new restrictions earlier this week a number of other european countries also reported record daily cases yesterday infections in italy topped 78000 cases hitting a new record since the start of the pandemic it also recorded 202 deaths bringing the total 
number of deaths in the country to 1,36,753. Portugal recorded 17,172 new cases. Greece Health Minister Tanoi Plevri called for calm after the country reported 21,657 cases. Health authorities in England reported a record 1,17,093 cases. Full UK-wide COVID data has been unavailable over the Christmas period, while a number of cities including Paris, London and Berlin have cancelled official New Year's celebrations. Some governments have been less willing to bring in nationwide restrictions. People in France and England have been asked to use their common sense, while the Spanish capital Madrid has said it will go ahead with its celebrations with a cap on the number of attendees at Puerta del Sol Square. Italy, meanwhile, has banned outdoor events and closed nightclubs, but there are no restrictions on private gatherings. Anita Anand for World News AIR. The WHO has warned that the Omicron variant could lead to overwhelmed healthcare systems. The WHO has warned against complacency even though preliminary findings suggest that Omicron could lead to milder disease. The surge in many countries has been propelled by highly transmissible Omicron variant. The WHO said a rapid growth of Omicron could result in a large number of hospitalizations, particularly amongst unvaccinated groups, and cause widespread disruption to health systems and other critical services. Some 11,500 flights have been scrapped worldwide since Friday, and tens of thousands more delayed during one of the year's busiest travel periods. Multiple airlines have blamed staffing shortages caused by the spike in Omicron cases. In Bangladesh, three more cases of the Omicron variant of COVID-19 were detected on Wednesday, taking the total number of the new variant to seven in the country. The newly detected cases were found in Dhaka. The information was shared by the Global Initiative on Sharing All Influenza Data, GISAID, database of Germany. Two of the infected persons are women, while the third is an 84-year-old man. Earlier this week, two people were found infected with the Omicron variant of coronavirus in Bangladesh. Another indigenous COVID-19 vaccine, Corbivax, has received the Drug Controller General of India's approval for emergency use authorization. Corbivax is developed by Biological E Limited, which is India's first indigenously developed receptor binding domain protein subunit vaccine for COVID-19. The Department of Biotechnology and its public sector undertaking, Biotechnology Industry Research Assistance Council, BIRAC, have supported Biological E's COVID-19 vaccine candidate from pre-clinical stage to phase 3 clinical studies. The vaccine candidate was provided financial support under COVID-19 research consortium through the National Biopharma Mission. Iran's Foreign Minister Hossein Amir Abdullahian has once again voiced optimism about the ongoing talks with the P4 plus 1 group in Vienna, saying negotiations are on a good path. Amir Abdullahian was speaking to journalists in Tehran on Tuesday. He said Iran believes that if the other sides continue talks in good faith and with seriousness, a win-win deal is possible in the near future. He added what matters is that Iran and the P4 plus 1 have a common single text which was put forth by Tehran. The top Iranian diplomat also thanked the EU's deputy foreign policy of Chief Andrike Mora for his efforts as the coordinator of the negotiations. Iran has presented two drafts to the P4 plus 1 in the previous round of talks that outlined Tehran's proposals regarding sanctions removal and its nuclear activities. Iran has also rejected any deadlines for the talks and has criticized the West for insinuating time is running out for a deal. Tehran says it will continue the negotiations as long as necessary. In today's hotspot section, we bring you AIR News Special Program 2021, Afghanistan, the year that was. The whole world has witnessed a kind of transformation in the years 2020-21 due to the COVID-19 pandemic. However, 2021 has been a year of turmoil for Afghanistan and its people for more than one reason. 
This was the year when Afghanistan, besides dealing with the pandemic, saw complete withdrawal of the NATO forces and U.S. troops leading to chaos in the country, resulting in the Taliban's seizure of power in Kabul and subsequently return of the Dark Ages. The U.S. war on terror in Afghanistan ended with the Taliban coming back to power. Despite claiming to be different, the new Taliban government so far has looked and acted just like the one that had horrified the world 20 years ago. And now, a massive humanitarian crisis in Afghanistan is looming. In 2020, the then U.S. President Donald Trump struck a deal with the Taliban that required withdrawing all U.S. troops by May 1, 2021, which was further extended to September the 11th, 2021, the 20th anniversary of the 9-11 attacks. After Afghan National Defense and Security Force, ANDSF, collapsed and Taliban took over Afghanistan on August the 15th, all hope for peace and stability in the country seems to be elusive. The transition from People's Republic of Afghanistan to Islamic Emirate of Afghanistan has led to the deterioration of the condition of women and their education, unsafe environment for minorities, and banning of any kind of opposition. The country also witnessed chaos and major displacement, refugee crisis, transnational crimes and terror networks emanating from its soil. Since the regime changed, the media in Afghanistan is anything but independent. Afghanistan has been tremendously dependent on foreign aid and is facing a huge financial challenge after the Taliban's control. Some of the major donors have halted financial support for the country. Deprived of international aid because of the West's refusal to recognize the new Afghan rulers, the UN's World Food Program recently has warned that the country faces the worst humanitarian disaster on earth. The biggest challenge for the Taliban is being able to transform from an insurgent force into a political and administrative body that can manage a complex and diverse nation such as Afghanistan. Further, factionalism and disgruntled cadres, lack of resources and governance experience, tackling a hostile Islamic State Khorasan ISK, a looming humanitarian crisis and lack of international support are other challenges. On the other hand, for ordinary Afghans, food, shelter and employment are a priority, with women in particular bearing the brunt of the Taliban's oppressive social policies. For Western countries such as the United States and its NATO partners, the fear is twofold. First is that the conditions may deteriorate so much that it may lead tens of thousands of Afghans fleeing to seek shelter abroad. The second is that terror groups such as Al-Qaeda may again find safe haven in Afghanistan. At present, the road ahead in Afghanistan looks unclear. India has played a major role in the reconstruction of Afghanistan since the fall of the Taliban regime in 2001. India has always favored an Afghan-led and Afghan-owned peace process to usher in safety and stability in that country. India has also been actively involved in the reconstruction efforts in war-ravaged Afghanistan. Since 2002, India has committed almost 3 billion US dollars for the socio-economic development of the country. The construction of the major Salma Dam, the new Afghan parliament building, Zaranj Delaram Highway and some other infrastructure projects are among the key investments India has made so far in that country. India has also decided to take up 116 high-impact community development projects in 31 provinces of Afghanistan. New Delhi also announced that ongoing programs for education, capacity building, skills and human resource development in Afghanistan, one of the largest such programs in the world, would continue for a further period of five years from 2017 to 2022. However, since Taliban has come to power, unlike other neighboring countries, India had been hesitant in exploring engagement with the Taliban and ended up withdrawing from the country. India has legitimate interests in the stability of Afghanistan and enjoys goodwill among all Afghan communities. Also, India's development role has been well acknowledged by the Afghans and the international community. Valsa Williams for World News.
India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi will visit Haldwani in Uttarakhand on Thursday. Mr. Modi will inaugurate and lay the foundation stone of 23 projects worth over 17,500 crore rupees. Among the 23 projects, foundation stone will be laid for 17 projects worth over 14,100 crore rupees. These projects cover a wide array of sectors and areas across the state, including irrigation, road, housing, health infrastructure, industry, sanitation, and drinking water supply. Japan and China have agreed to launch a military hotline with China in 2022 in a bid to put in place a system to defuse potential crises over disputed islands and the Taiwan Strait. The Japanese Defense Ministry in a statement said, that the two governments agreed to set up the link by the end of 2022 during a two-hour video conference on Monday between the Defense Minister Nobuo Kishi and his Chinese counterpart Wei Feng He. The ministers agreed on the timely establishment of a hotline between the two militaries, the Japanese Defense Ministry said, in order to improve the effectiveness of the maritime and aerial communication mechanism, a system established in 2018 to avert unintended clashes. The Chinese Defense Ministry said there was a need for strengthening liaison and communication between the defense ministers of the two countries without any specific mention of a hotline. They should strengthen high-level exchanges and practical cooperation, further expand the content of the sea and air liaison mechanism, jointly control risks, prevent the escalation of conflicts, and continuously improve the level of defense cooperation, Wei said, according to the Chinese Defense Ministry. A recent white paper by the Japanese Defense Ministry called for Taiwan's security to be viewed with an increased sense of crisis. Japan and China also have fragile relations over territorial dispute involving Senkaku Islands, which are also known in China as the DIOU. China has accused the United States of ignoring its obligations under the Outer Space Treaty as it alleged that Starlink satellites launched by the U.S. billionaire Elon Musk's firm SpaceX had two close encounters this year with its space station in orbit. Chinese Foreign Ministry spokesman Zhao Zijian said that China has complained to the UN Secretary General on this matter. He said in Beijing that the Chinese space station was forced to avoid collisions with satellites launched by Musk's Starlink Internet Services project adding that under the treaty, the parties should bear the international responsibility for the activities in the outer space, whether by governmental or non-governmental entities. The incidents occurred on the 1st of July and the 21st of October, according to a document submitted by China this month to the United Nations Office for Outer Space Affairs, according to media reports. These dangerously close space encounters have added to the tensions between the U.S. and China. The Chinese spokesman accused the U.S. of ignoring its obligations under the treaty, posing a severe threat to the astronauts in orbit, and urged Washington to take measures to prevent such close encounters from happening again and act in a responsible manner. Experts say that the recent close encounters of SpaceX satellites with China's space station shows the risk of collisions in an overcrowded space with thousands of satellites and proliferating space debris. This is All India Radio giving you the news. For quick news updates around the clock, follow us on Twitter at AIR News Alerts. At the domestic stock markets, key indices snapped two days of gains to end slightly lower today, while the rupee at the forex market weakened against the dollar. In international markets, Brent crude futures rose to trade above $79 a barrel. A report from the business world. At the stock market, the Sensex of the Bombay Stock Exchange fell 91 points or 0.2% to end at 57,806 today in a thin trade. The Nifty at the National Stock Exchange shed 20 points or 0.1% to 17,214. At the Forex market, rupee weakened 8 passes to 74.73 rupees against the dollar. Amongst the global markets, Asian markets ended mostly lower today. So Japan's Nikkei index fell 0.6% and China's Shanghai Composite Index and South Korea's Kospi Index each ended about 0.9% lower. 
in Hong Kong key index Hang Seng slipped 0.8% but Singapore Straits Times index inched up 0.3%. In Europe key indices London's FTSE 100 had climbed 0.9% and France's CAC 40 had traded marginally lower and Germany's DAX had fallen 0.4% in the intraday trade. Global crude oil prices edged higher today as industry data showed a decline in the US inventories boosting demand sentiment. So Brent crude oil futures gained 26 cents to trade at 79.20 dollars a barrel. US crude futures rose 16 cents to 76.14 dollars a barrel. Back home gold fell to 116 rupees to 47,010 rupees per 10 grams at the Delhi's bullion market. Nishit Kumar for World News All India Radio. In U.S., a conservation team in the state of Virginia has opened a box containing Confederate war memorabilia believed to be more than 130 years old. It contained newspapers, books, and ammunition dated to the U.S. Civil War. Workers discovered the container in the state capital of Richmond while finishing the removal of a statue of the Confederate General Robert E. Lee. The memorial was removed after protests against it following the murder of George Floyd in Minneapolis last year. The lead conservator for the Virginia Department of Historic Resources, Kate Ridgway, said the contents and design of the box appeared to match the historical records. Tens of thousands of turkeys are being destroyed in Israel as it tries to contain a serious avian flu outbreak. More than 5,000 migratory cranes have already died at the Hula Nature Reserve, which Environment Minister Tamar Zanber called the worst blow to wildlife in Israel's history. Local farmers were also being forced to cull half a million chickens, prompting fears of a possible egg shortage. So far, no transmission of the A. H1N1 virus to humans has been reported. However, Prime Minister Naftali Bennett met his national security advisor and other experts on Monday to discuss efforts to stop that from happening. Although transmission from birds to humans is a rare event, the deaths of 456 people infected with the virus have been reported worldwide since 2003, according to the World Health Organization. Domestic birds are far more susceptible and once the virus is found in commercial and household flocks, Rapid destruction is recommended of all birds that might be infected. World number one tennis player Novak Djokovic has pulled out of the ATP Cup in Sydney, Australia. Ahead of the start of the tournament on Saturday, organizers said in a statement on Wednesday that Djokovic has withdrawn from the 2022 ATP Cup. There has been intense speculation over the Serbian champion's participation in both events. Djokovic, who has repeatedly declined to say if he has been inoculated against COVID-19, last month reiterated his stance about freedom of choice over taking the vaccine. In the first cricket test, India have set a victory target of 305 runs for South Africa at Supersport Park in Centurion. India were all out at 174 in their second innings in the second session on day four of the game on Wednesday. For the hosts, Kaviso Rabada and Marco Jansen claimed four wickets each while Lungi and Giri bagged remaining two wickets. Chasing the target, South Africa were 94 for four in their second innings when stumps were drawn on day four. Earlier, India bowled out the hosts for 197 runs to take a healthy 130-run first innings lead. For India, Mohammad Shami was the pick of the bowlers as the seamer took a five-wicket haul to complete his 200 wickets in Test cricket. Apart from Shami, Jaspeed Bumrah and Shardul Thakur picked two wickets each while Mohammad Siraj took the remaining one. Temba Bavuma top scored for South Africa with his 52-run knock. Mohammad Shami has established himself among the greats of Indian cricket by becoming only the fifth Indian pacer to take 200 test wickets. Shami achieved the feat on day three of the first India-South Africa test match in Centurion. Shami reached a milestone in 55 test matches and is the third quickest Indian after Kapil and Srinath to join the list. Shami took a five-wicket haul at the Super Sport Park to reach 200 test wickets. Shami's exceptional bowling effort helped India bowl South Africa out for a score of 197 in the first innings. And now let us take a quick look at the major developments around the world as reported in the foreign press. The Guardian reports France accelerates introduction of vaccine passes, Europe cases at record high. Cezanne News says France tightens restrictions amid Omicron surge. The Globe and Mail writes, global COVID-19 cases up 11% last week, Omicron risk high, says WHO. 
The Wall Street Journal writes, U.S. Russia set schedule for Ukraine's stock in January. Sputnik News says former U.S. National Security Advisor John Bolton calls for NATO to stand up to Russia. Tolo News says death toll from Brazil's flooding rises to 20. And Financial Times says Hong Kong pro-democracy news site closes hours after police raid office. India's Minister of State for Education, Dr. Shubha Shorkar, on Wednesday virtually announced the Atal Ranking of Institutions on Innovation Achievements, ARIAA 2021. IIT Madras got the first rank under the Central University and Institute of National Importance category. On this occasion, Dr. Sarkar said ARIIA ranking will certainly inspire Indian institutions to reorient their mindset and build ecosystems to encourage high-quality research. Dr. Sarkar said more than quantity, the institute should focus on quality of innovations and research. He said this will help in achieving the targets set for making countries self-reliant. Chairman of the All India Council for Technical Education, Professor Anil Sahasrabuddhe said, Indigenous version of innovation and entrepreneurship ranking initiative designed through IRAA will not only help higher education institutions to demonstrate their efforts, but also orient them in setting goals at institute level. As India marches towards administering 150 crore vaccine doses against COVID-19, news about the new corona variant is a cause of concern. In this situation, we appeal to our listeners to get fully vaccinated at the earliest and help others get vaccinated. Please continue to follow these three simple steps to stay safe. Wear a face mask, maintain two gaz ki duri for social distancing and focus on hand and face hygiene. For any COVID-related information and guidance, contact the National Helpline numbers 011-2397-8046 and 1075. Before we wind up, let us take a quick look at the headlines once again. India welcomes Egypt as the fourth member of the BRICS New Development Bank. The United States reports record COVID-19 infections as Europe's Omicron cases also rise. India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi to inaugurate and lay the foundation stone of 23 development projects in Uttarakhand tomorrow. In cricket, India set a victory target of 305 runs for South Africa in the Centurion Test. And world number one tennis player Novak Djokovic pulls out of the ATP Cup in Sydney. India is celebrating the 152nd birth anniversary of Mahatma Gandhi. Before we end, let us listen to his favorite bhajan, Vaishnav Jan, by artists from Mongolia.
We end this bulletin. We'll be back at the same time tomorrow with the next edition of World News. Thank you.